All right, everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Life in the Lair. And I have received, uh, I don't know, about a half a dozen DMs and text messages, emails, and what have you in regards to the Daily Wire. Their video they put out was about a month ago, two weeks ago, in regards to um, the red pill. Now, I got divorced. Was, my divorce was final, I believe, in the, either the end of 07, beginning of 08. I was absolutely flabbergasted at how I was treated in the court. Now, mind you, um, at the time, I was in the service. You know, we're talking at a top secret SCI clearance. And I had such uh, clearance for, by that time, a couple of decades, meaning every seven years, the the FBI climbs up your ass and does a full-scale investigation and see if you're worthy of uh, keeping that clearance. You're all not worthy. Oh. <laughs> Obviously, I was. I also, you know, when I got divorced, uh, it was after my third war. I was almost killed in two of the three wars. And I had this belief that I would be treated fairly because... You know, I defended the country, and I uh, bought into the whole uh, red, white, and blue baloney. That did not happen. I got waylaid. My ex-wife killed my dog, did all kinds of egregious shit, denied me visitation, took my kids away. You name it, I went down the list. Fought it all in court, spent a boatload of cash, and, uh, you know, almost died. Like, literally, if I did not have a former commander commit suicide literally four or five days prior to me planning to do the same thing, I would not be here now, okay? That is how egregious this whole situation is towards men. It is fatal. Know anyone who could use a good-ass chewing? I could use a good ass kick, and I'll be very honest with you. But what if you could get that message delivered by an authentic drill instructor who spent 33 years in the Army? Ha ha ha! You asked for it. For just 35 bucks, you can get a customized knife hand ass chewing for a person of your choice straight from the popster. I think you aren't even good enough to whiff the thoughts from a dog's ass. And monthly supporters of the regiment receive a $10 discount. I am hard, but I am fair. Use the Cash App code on the screen to send your donation along with notes on the person whose ass needs chewing. And the popster will handle the rest. So shut the fuck up! Because men are wired to provide and protect. And it's nice, you know, if uh, you're appreciated for such services. And it's obvious in today's current world, we are not. He's right. Now... I've already done some reaction videos to the Daily Wire, some of the stuff they put out. Now, I appreciate what they do. I don't agree with everything that they have to say. No one should. I think, for the most part, their hearts are in the right place. Uh, they're aiming in the general direction of the target we are all aiming at. The only problem is, from my perspective, and this is purely my opinion, they seem to be controlled opposition. I watched the videos in regards to Crowder and contract and what have you that they wanted him to sign. Now, to be honest, I talked to a couple guys who do contract law. One of them works in the entertainment industry. And that contract, for the most part, was boilerplate. Now, you can take that one of two ways. You can take it as a compliment and an insult. I would take it as an insult. If I show up there and they just send me the run-of-the-mill boilerplate contract, I probably wouldn't sign it either. It is what it is. And Candace Owens showing that, that tape, everything from, his, from Crowder's internal security cameras, uh, I think was dishonorable at best. So I'm not a fan of that at all. This guy here, I haven't actually done a direct video for this individual here. For the last... Uh, five years to, to essentially now mean anti, I would say anti-woman. They would say pro-man, but I think it's 
far beyond pro man. I think it's decidedly anti woman in many ways. And you see people who, I think, some of them are are bad actors because you have eyes and a brain and common sense, and you can see the hammer getting dropped on. We're in our third generation of dudes just getting screwed over by the system. And we're starting to warn each other, make content so we don't participate in this. And we have literally seen the wedding industry collapse, the jewelry industry collapsing. All of that uh, stuff that went around the whole wedding industry is imploding. And the numbers I've seen is somewhere between 5.1 and 8.1 out of 1,000 are getting married. That is about as low as it gets since they started counting this statistic shortly after the Civil War. And I think it's starting to scare the hell out of a lot of people. And they should be scared. Because when men decide to say fuck it and pull out, walk away from the uh, plantation or the reservation, whatever you want to call it, it's going to get bad for a lot of people. We're peddling, but then you also see people like like Pearly Things who, I don't know Pearl, I don't know if she's a bad actor or not. I kind of get the sense that maybe she's just a naive uh, person being kind of dragged along out of half desire to be famous and half probably hasn't read a book. I've met Pearl a couple times. My opinion of her, for the most part, is neutral. I don't agree with everything she says, and uh, I would say a lot of the things she talks about are in the wheelhouse of MGTOW Red Pill. I'm in the, this profession, if you want to call it that, to save lives. I am literally on the front line, beating back death and hopelessness with logic, reason, and a little bit of comedy. And I'm going to tell you, it's an uphill battle. And any ally I can get that will assist me in this end product of saving lives from suicide, I'm cool with it. Now, do I think it's uh, a little screwed up that a woman, you know, gets blown up instantly and has as many eyeballs on her as she does? It's kind of aggravating a little bit, but you got to take your ego out of this equation. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than you. There's a lot of pain out there and a lot of death that is needless and quite literally could be stopped with a little bit of education, some wisdom, and, of course, graveyard humor. What else does this guy have to say here? Um, and, and half of that I can relate to. <laughs> <laughs> but and the other half you can also relate to. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think it's this interesting question that, that uh, is harder to talk about in one-on-one -on -one settings. It might be a fit this format. Just to talk about what is the role of men and women, what is the role of marriage in a society that has essentially turned its back on the concept of marriage that is legally encoded anti anti-man. So what you're seeing here is they're all going to agree with him that the system is radically stacked against men. And then they turn around. I'm not going to show this whole interview. Uh, it's, it's kind of aggravating. But they turn around and they shame you like a feminist. Like, listen, the blame and shame thing, I'm putting an end to that shit. Because historically, men have been blamed and shamed into walking into the meat grinder of death by the millions in the past century. Well, I'm sick of that. And you should be sick of it, too. You really should. This, this whole culture, society, the Western world, whatever you want to call it, is not going to stand. It is going to fall. It might be tomorrow. It might be 10, 15 years from now. But we are circling the drain because men are pulling out of the equation. And it's not onesie twosies anymore. It's happening wholesale. And if I get my way, I'm going to bring that marriage number to zero out of a thousand because I'm now 55 years old. I left home at 17, went into the army. I have seen three plus decades of the meat grinder of what women and feminism has done to our military, 
the men serving there. I did many, many funerals in my 33 years. And uh, I would say there was a frightening percentage were suicides or suspicious deaths at best. And when I did my own research into this, roughly 2009, 2010, when I'd come across somebody who had died from suicide, who was a serviceman or veteran, I would cut and paste the entire article, eulogy, what have you, onto a Word document, and I would do a find and replace option, and I was looking for estranged, separated, divorced, former wife, former husband, what have you. In 70% of the cases, those target words popped up, meaning that 7 out of 10 of the individuals that I threw into the dirt had a contact with divorce or family court in the prior five years leading up to their death. Now, am I going to sit there and tell you that's 100% responsible? I can't. I'm just one guy. It's just an observation. But, you know, hey, we're pumping out billions of dollars for, you know, a bunch of stupid-ass studies that are going to go nowhere and mean nothing. But we can't seem to come off any money to actually do studies in regards to what feminism and the divorce industry has done to this country in the past 50 years. I would love to see that, but it's probably not going to happen. As for the Daily Wire, uh, I'm kind of upset with them in regards to their appearing as, you know, controlled opposition. But there's really not much we can do about it at this time. All of our mainstream media is owned by six corporations. And your internet is basically being run by Microsoft, Apple, and Google. So there you go. We're not going to make it, are we? I don't really like to play their games. It's probably one of the main reasons why I can't seem to grow my channel and the fact that I'm being pigeonholed across the board. But at some point, either I'll do it or somebody just like me is going to be able to step in the limelight and destroy the system from within using nothing but facts, logic, reason, and truth and cracking a few jokes along the way.